Hey, 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 everyone. I'm your host, Rena Rupak. And I'm Dimpi Yadav. And we are the Girl Up Mukti podcast. The inner voice that tells your story, our story. Hey, everyone. Michelle Singh, all of this side. I'm a student of journalism honors from Christ University, Banagata Road Campus. Since the very beginning, I have the keen interest of reading and an urge to question everything that I come across. So today, I'll be hosting the episode of Girl of Mukti on gender-based violence. Gender-based violence till date is a subject of concern despite having numerous policies and programs. Gender-based violence is usually defined as sexual, physical, or psychological harm. Both men and women are victim of these violence, but the majority of them are usually women. Today, we have Ms. Avantika Rotagi with us to answer all our unanswered questions. Ms. Avantika Rotagi is an advocate and managing partner with Avon Juris. She has done her BCom honors from Motilal Nehru Law College and has a bachelor degrees in law from the University of Delhi. She is a member of Bar Council of India and Bar Council of Delhi and also a member International Council of Juris London. We are very much pleased and delighted to have you here with us. Ma'am. So Hello, let's start. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am. Whatever. Uh, you're most welcome, Ma'am. So, Ma'am, we shall start with the questions. So the first questions we have, Ma'am, is how many sections in our constitution are dedicated towards gender-based violence? Okay. So gender-based violence, uh, if we come to gender-based violence, it's a very widespread violence all over the world, particularly mostly in developing underdeveloped nations. And gender-based violence has many reasons, causes uh, for which uh, we are facing and uh, not particularly for uh, one type of gender, then there are particular minorities, people who are able, not able to, you know, uh, give themselves uh, a jump, you can say. All those uh, people, not people generally, uh, uh, generally face at the behest of the rich faces for the poor. Likewise, the same is in our society where women uh, being not able to, you know, put their uh, steps forward are able, you know, uh, uh, resulting for this gender-based violent widespread, particularly in India, where uh, not even in rural areas, urban areas also we are facing, not only at home, not only it's just a physical violence, it's an em- emotional, sexual, uh, you know, it's, it's a very widespread term. Right, and uh, which have been uh, being faced here, here by all of us, including bureaucrats, including uh, high profile lawyers, including every profession which we can say in one or the other way. Right, so that's the reason why our constitution recognize some, uh, you know, uh, they de- uh, has dedicated some uh, what you can say to protect them uh, from effect of this thing. Uh, violence, right? So uh, there are articles, fundamental rights, there are articles under Article 14, 15, uh, where you've been discussed about uh, how we can actually, you know, uh, equality is there for all of us. Then, uh, you know, uh, but the problem here with us is like our constitution is specifically called article. If you uh, go through various article 14, which says about the principles of equality before the law and equal protection of laws, then uh, uh, article 15 prohibition on uh, grounds of religion, race, caste, sex, or place of birth. This discrimination, the discrimination has is resulting into violence because discrimination is like when two people are equal right so there is nothing that comes in when there's a discrimination on any of the uh, one of the other reasons one comes before you know above the other so when this person is in who is in the authority he suppresses the one which is you know uh, at a lower lower level so if you uh, go through uh, various researches various people who have written what why there is violence even existing when when it comes to me I uh, recently got married and, uh, you know, when then there are uh, things like domestic violence happening. We've been uh, catering domestic violence cases, right? 
why uh, uh, the the question comes why do you even have to you know uh, put comes violence into picture so if you go towards the mental you know the reason why violence is because there's a patriarchal society major reason not even literacy you know people used to be like you know there's nothing in educated class they have far you know better life than you know uh, and our education is one of no education is one of the reason education eliminates poverty education you know gives the thought process the mind but the patriarchal society which patriarchy which is root bound in our uh, system right so when you see when you are a child when you see your father you know uh, uh, thrashing your mother right so as a child you are given that thing oh oh that's that's the norm that's how the society works right so that's there when and then when you you get married okay that that the, when you been hit so that's the thing oh it's very normal right so that's the where the cause root cause of violence is there and and to be very honest why violence is there because it violence gives satisfaction so gender based violence if we come you know why it is based on particular sort of a gender gender because one gender is being suppressed by the other gender that's why there is gender thing is there right and why violence is there violence because it gives a, a sort of you know satisfaction to the mind oh my god yeah i am superior to the other uh, that's the reason why gender based violence you know exist in in even in the developed countries also the forms yes, are right. different the forms are different right so that's the reason why it is engraved in our constitution also there are particular articles which talk about you know uh, uh, about various uh, opportunities like why equality before law all are, all are equal above law why the constitution has to say that we all know that because there's discrimination yes, which is happening so to curb that discrimination to make this thing available to all it is the duty of the constitution the preamble also it is written right women and equal you know, women have equal right as men as to enable them to take part effectively in administration of the country why why you have to write it because yes. it is deep rooted in the culture in the society so when you like start linking because laws we, we didn't have laws earlier so if you correlate everything cause and effect one thing leads to another right yes well, so i get that and then um nine uh, then there for other not for gender based like article 19 to 22 it is talking about right to freedom right and uh, right to uh, how you know fundamental rights uh how they are violated what are your rights how you can approach the court of law for uh, your rights so ma'am uh, uh yeah so ma'am is there like any specific like section or an article just based on gender based violence or is it just a you know like equality and the freedom it just comes under this right uh, article 23 which is talking about right against exploitation right human trafficking you know this gender based violence thing is not like this it is like this so from every corner things are coming so human okay. trafficking it is prohibited right uh, uh immoral traffic prevention act 1956 in 56 it is there to ab abolish pros uh, prostitution and other forms of uh, uh, trafficking do you even but still prostitution is there yes ma'am right so passing of the law is one thing that you have law protecting you right then there is we are talking about constitution and then we come to the indian penal code when we will see specific provisions which are there you know talking about how oh, and then that's a later thing uh, will come 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 with right but uh, when we come about the legislature the legislature has done its work right yes, the legislature has passed those laws but the problem is that the execution the it has not been able to uh, be implemented properly Yes, yeah free legal aid is given you know and then there are adequate means of livelihood and equal pay where the system of equal pay is coming because there were instances where women were not paid equal to men right and people think that why are women working because you know, how why 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 should they work they they are meant to you know do the household work the problem is not of doing household work today what uh, the urban society think oh my god i have to work oh i don't have to work no it's upon your choice the choice should be there whether i want to work 
whether I whether I want to work, you know, as in have to go to office, some that sort of a work, whether I have to take care of my home. It should be my own will. What has what decision is to be given? Not to be given by any person. Oh my God, no! The family has to take a decision for me, because in the end, you are answerable to yourself only, right? And then this, yes, I think, Article Thirty Nine, uh, uh, it requires the state to directly to some policy towards the securing men and women equally, uh, which is talking about the equal right to equal means of livelihood. This is somehow also related because when we go to workplace. then this prevention of sexual harassment act that has come 2013 right equal rights uh, and are these these are affecting and they have an effect on the economy michel as in one thing is correlated with other and then they have effect on whole as in, uh, as a person as as on my thought process if yes, not if then this was actually my next question with you okay, that okay, whether okay, violence okay. have a effect on the eco- uh, the economy of india yeah oh well, violence i saw my my father uh, no um let's say an example my father is beating my mother right so i had an inspiration way back when i was a little kid oh my god uh, and my mom's like okay uh, that's that's normal right so what is my thought process okay that that's very normal so if that if that thing is coming to me right i'll be thinking oh my god this is normal yes that your thought process is you know it is change in a way right that my mom is not not working so i will also not work right if you know that that is in deep root and then as an economy if you see our resources what you have to do your resources is under utilized your what you can do for the economy you can go you can work you can you know work for the economy gdp will rise what what we are doing we are not letting uh Or, uh, you know, give wings yes. to people to fly. You know, cutting those wings, which which have been there, and it's gender based violence is not you know specific in particular type of society, right? Or uh, you know, the people we will know. It is it is widespread around the world. Not even in in yes. our country only. As I am uh, born and brought up in India, as a developing nation, right? but in the uh, um, rich societies we have different forms right not only in homes in communities you know uh, with uh, you know sexually the partner yes. you know uh, being exploiting emotionally and economic this is resulting into economical loss for the society right and and the so mom, basically gender violence, based yeah. violence have a huge effect on the economy it's just not that yeah. visible but yeah it does have a uh, effect on the yeah. economy mm. so ma'am my next question for you is that are there any special rights for the different groups of people yeah there are, there are a lot of rights for different groups of people different group of people include minorities untouchables right uh, um uh, as as we can see there, there's a lot of uh, uh, like uh, article i think uh, 17 it abolishes untouchability right there were also oh, at the time there were a lot of you know uh, uh, during uh, you know, mahatma gandhi's time untouchability was one of the major you know big thing right then then there were abolition of titles then there was prohibition article 15 talking about prohibition of discrimination right and you know they should so not ma'am, be so mom are there any uh, special rights for the lgbtq co- community as well right yes so this edge uh, this thing is very you know uh, developing countries are not able to take such things right because yes, what happens is like uh, we have a mindset we have a certain what you call a society and who who rules the society what are the norms there's no, nothing written so whatever is i am liking it right becomes is what i am following that's with the society so whatever thing is okay with them they follow it if it is happening in their house right it's okay all right but if it's happening at someone's house you know it's it's a big thing so that because these houses individually collectively in, in, uh, results in the economy the growth of the economy so the mindset of the society is such that they are unable to take change why because they've been seen they've been seeing things for yes, people ma'am. to decide decide the taking a decision right very important to know the how how people generally take decision take a pro and con and decide accordingly whatever a decision it is 
but no when when there's a patriarchal society down the lane right so when you are not keeping women uh, see the problem is michelle uh, it, it very very to be very minutely described not something very legal right 20, 25 20 20 whatever age you get married 25 years you are under the supervision of your father for a girl i'm talking about right and sexuality about uh, you know what is your likes and dislikes right you, you know what no one tells you about till the time you're getting married right and then your know, people are pushing oh my god oh my god uh, no so that the mindset is like that then after 25 years when you get married then you are meant to be under your husband right where yes, is the individual the individuality of the woman so the thought process is like that right so uh, you know and and that's coming out from like so much ages so you know ages and there were sati and there were a lot of things right so so people think that it's it's the right thing it's happening with my mother it's happening with me it's happening with the other person okay that's okay that's normal so what's yes, normal ma'am. what's normal so same is happening with the other you know uh, uh, thing other uh, genders also and courts and everything lawyers working for the human rights not even you know violating human rights and um, yes, Can't so, even, you know, uh, you know. yes so ma'am as a lawyer what mm-hmm. more cases of violence like of a, do you see of a particular gender see uh being one of from the liberal families and having a lib, uh, such mindset i feel the abuse is at both ends in the sense women and men if i see i see as a person Yes, cases no. are there for me there you want laws are there right there are presumptions i have seen both ends coming to my my myself right there are f- uh, fake cases also that's coming and then there are actual cases but what's actual what's fake that comes when the defense is taken and it takes a lot years in the trial in, for a person so i for my being a uh, uh, from working here in delhi and you know uh, in my uh, such a small span of experience which i have seen i i meet cases both from both the corners from men women both coming right and someone is on the one side of the law and for the other it could be a misuse but we cannot say that when it comes because we as a lawyer are, you know have a different uh, approach towards the society yes ma'am yeah so uh, ma'am could you explain in very simple words what are the different cases one can file based on violence all right so uh, violence then it will depend upon what sort of a violence it is right uh, for sexual violence is happening for it is for the uh, violence uh, not unmarried when you are unmarried then you have violence when you are married then there, if there is a violence then if there is a violence happening <clears throat> um away from your house at your ho- office right and uh, so ma'am, other the, than the, sexual harassment can we like file upon a uh, psychological harm because violence yeah, does emotional right 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 right, right right so the, when the harm is there harm is both physical and mental physical could be seen by your naked eyes right oh my god this much of harm is that to a person but when you are mentally effect, affected by it, that that cannot be judged individually by just looking at it oh my god what what has happened right so we uh, have uh, we are you know particularly if we terms about the violence you now the violence comes for the gender and if we come to women then there are um, sexual harassment at home at house at workplace then there are acid attacks right then there's rape to be uh, precisely said rape how this 2013 uh the amendment was there in the criminal and and uh, that was the need of the r but uh tell me one thing that's been so you uh, know nirbhaya case and such cases been down the line you have the the acts we were like okay uh, the these these cases are resulting because of the uh because our laws are not that strong 
we we amended our cons we amended our ipc we criminal procedural code everything was amended right laws were made stringent does it has resulted in any uh, less crimes being you uh, know done on women no ma'am no. the answer would be particularly no why because ma'am because... people have that mindset yes and so yeah Yeah. From starting, they have this mindset. So yeah, right. nothing is actually stopping them right now. Yeah. So the law is there for the protection, right? But prevention is better than always, better than cure. So at the very initiation only, the mindset, the thought process is to be searched. The surroundings has to be searched. For that, we need education. For that, we need to elimination of the poverty. For that, we need uh an employment, right? For that, we need a lot of things we require. for that thing to get to um, but these are all measures which we which we can try this mass mass population also right how the population is resulting there's numerous if you uh, michelle if you uh, go through uh, a lot of uh, acts that have come numerous you know social uh, acts which has come you know for protecting of the people right socially uh, backward classes what you can say not backward classes but yeah people who are socially challenged and then there are lot of acts which have come lot of uh, which have been you know uh, numerous filed um, um uh, not uh, plans for their uh, improvement but they are not at the execution level execution trust me on this no it's not as good it's, as it should be yeah rape so uh, yeah uh, ma'am that yeah be, huh. yes tell yeah. me So, ma'am, in most of the countries, the laws against domestic violence is uh, mm-hmm. like for the protection is both for men and women, but that mm-hmm. is actually not the case in India because we usually mm-hmm. see all of the laws are made especially for women. So, ma'am, do you think it's high time for the government to address the stigma which is attached to the male victims of abuse? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> see, that's that's the problem. right if i go to a police station and i say i've been raped by say a b c well, so the presumption is like if a girl is saying she has been raped that means she has been raped right it will be presumed until or unless the test is there the trial goes the defense that's taken right uh, that's that's different thing altogether but there's a presumption right and that's the reason why uh, uh, the women because our laws are you know women empowering laws if you will see protection of domestic violence act and the other uh, acts for child uh, human trafficking child labor right these uh, these are all empowering the special uh, people right so the presumption is like these special acts what the presumption is that okay the the rape has been done to me by that yes, person ma'am. ab wo jab hoga tab hoga this is this is where we are at fault so ma'am uh, uh, like if a male person goes to a police station and said that i've been raped so what right. do you and think is most the of the poli- reaction people get <laughs> yeah the police officer will give this this kind of a laugh okay you've been raped <laughs> oh nice how so ma'am what do you think uh, yeah. the government should do now to you know the, make this, this very normal because they do yeah. like you know have abuse and we don't know about these cases just because they are men and then they are told to be calm down and you know shut right. this all thing and not to come out so right. what do you think we all should do about this see the there uh sir because the cases in urban and rural are different about violence type of violence where the violence is being taken place right and then for people to believe that You know the rape could be against a man. Oh my God, no! Right? You know because the mindset, the 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 things which are being taught is like okay, the main the you know the rape can against be a woman only. So the yes, laws ma'am. are also like that for dowry death. In case see seven years or uh, up to seven years punishment is that if it is proved that the uh, the woman has died after the death in, within seven years uh, that. you know it it is a case of a dowry death what if a male has died no no such provisions so it is a need, yes, need of the r r to be you know to get those gender neutral laws uh, so ma'am uh, uh, how do the helpline numbers and the ngos 
assist people who are the victims of abuse and is there any helpline service or uh, ngo name you would like to suggest to our listeners all right uh, uh ngos they are actually working really good if we come to developing countries because uh, they uh, they actually work for the people and uh, if we say uh, how well they are working uh, i don't i cannot comment on any particular ngos or some commission so ma'am how basically do this assist Assist, right. so the helplines and everything are there then there is national commission for women there a lot of state and national commissions are also there apart from ngos who are working towards a particular you know but uh, you not must not have heard about men commission <laughs> yes ma'am yeah. any commission for men particularly working for their rights yeah there are pil there are groups which are working there are ngos at the because ngos work at the ground level okay. so uh, you uh, ngos are approachable they assist you they provide you with food some food programs are going to you uh, okay ma'am so ma'am the next question is what constitutes workplace harassment and violence and how and to whom can we one report such a case all right uh, workplace harassment sexual harassment if we go this uh, came in after vishaka guidelines there was a was a very very famous case where you know the guidelines were given how because earlier there were you know when uh, we talk about this act 2013 this uh, prevention of sexual harassment it came in and before that uh, the person has to you know there's some kind of an sexual harassment which has taken place and then uh, and that to at workplace you know we we used to generally go through proceeding through filing a complaint under section 354 it's a 509 in indian penal code right and there was no law in india till this uh, vishaka you know judgment came in to govern this matter and the guideline guidelines which came or uh, outcome of the case were derived from the you know convention on the elimination of all forms of uh, discrimination against women right and uh, you know when at every workplace there is an you know the uh, according to those guidelines there is an internal committee which is formed right and you can you know uh, it is defined what is sexual harassment right and the definition is given if even you know it's just not about the harass sexually you've been you have to harass you know unwanted you know inappropriate sexual attention comments gestures right looks all all form of things could be there you know so mom when uh, such thing yeah, yeah so mom when such thing happen happens in a workplace so mm-hmm. should one go to the high authorities of the company or they should directly go to you know the league, like the police station or somewhere like that okay. uh see since after the act has come in i personally see what happens is like at workplace when you uh, now there's a lot of fear of you know um, losing your job because you know people generally when some person who is in above the authority generally or maybe may, maybe not you know i there's this fear of boss this fear of guilt in the society that one has to might face being thrown out of the job or being demoted right fear of guilt in the society fear of being you know does this they will put a blot on their resume right there's a lot of fear uh, which uh, uh, if you and and that's the reason why people when girls generally don't report such things in their offices right and after the supreme court gave the shaka guidelines you i you know personally you should there's an internal committee which is formed right if within 3 months or maybe after that also it is depends you can you know complain you can you know write a complaint in written or maybe you can approach them right and you can talk out and uh, you know and tell what happened how it happened right and and vishaka guidelines are you know um, uh, it is necessary for the employers employers it it is it is made necessary that the employers are workplace as well as other are responsible uh, uh, apart from police to police and you know the, these authorities so are always there but since it is the you know responsibility of the employers institution to you know uh, to ensure these the prevention 
of sexual harassment of women is there in their workplace so the duty of the employer you know it, it is made on the institution right that other uh, to prevent uh, of the commission of such acts in case if the such act is you know um, uh, happened right so to pro provide the procedure for the resolution right all employers or person in charge of the work whether it is a public or a private sector they are you know made bound right it is their duty to take appropriate you know steps so ma'am how often do you come across uh, cases where the violence is actually committed by someone the victim knows and is close to and how should one handle such a case see this is something uh, which is a very very uh, tricky thing right uh, because if if there is some third person who has committed right you always will do anything or everything uh, you know you know because this some outsider has cause that harm and for the uh, person for a woman then the, the whole family is supporting right and everyone is because third person and when it is in the family it is quite common i feel so it's quite common if there's some uh, kind of an activity is done uh, by a relative right and it's a certain covert act which which is there but uh, it's first thing first one should you know um, it should discuss talk this thing out with any person you think comfortable with or can help you out because if you will not talk about it i don't think any resolution can ever help you out right talking yes, it out inside the family with you know because because you are not at fault a yes, victim who, who has been you know uh, who who who's, who's done wrong was been now you i have not done anything wrong if i been raped The other person has committed the wrong. That mentality should, you know, should be deep rooted in our society. That that person has committed an heinous act. But what is happening here is, is the girl is himself, you know, made responsible. Oh my God, you should, you must have done something or the other in case, you know. So, but uh, ma'am, yeah. if like this something happens with an adult or someone hmm. like of my age also, we know who uh, we should go to. I mean, we have teachers, we have friends. but mm-hmm. what if these kind of thing happen with kids who don't have that much of knowledge and they only right. you know trust their parents or their relatives yeah, so, yeah. So what one can thing, what can happen like we can do for them yeah for the kids one thing first foremost you have to um, not tell that thing up to your parents right that's something and for the parents it's the responsibility to tell the kids earlier that this thing is right and this thing is wrong is something of that is happening with you right you have to say no this is beyond you know that uh, path you know this this is the line that should not be crossed so this education should be there uh, been given by our parents to the kid to the kids that because kids you how will they know what is right and what is wrong it is we only as a parent have to guide them the process is if there's some violence right you have to first either being a victim or a you know or a person who's helping out the victim first register an fir first thing foremost is the fir must be filed and it is not compulsory earlier it was uh, okay the jurisdiction have to be taken care of you know if I, any victim can file anywhere a zero fir it allows any police station to register an fir regardless of their jurisdictional area so if i feel something or as a parent i feel something for my kid right or as a, as an individual i feel something wrong has been done by any big any any family member i i'll immediately call the police i'll go to the police i'll tell them the story i'll get them okay an fir has to be filed and as as soon as an fir is filed right the delay if in case any see these things like a lot of disease, the, the lot of uh, you know because we there's there is that thought of being socially you know being uh, backed by the society yeah so ma'am everything actually revolves around our mindset and what kind of education have been given to us from the starting and right. and, the and, just, and there, one of the reasons yeah. is that we have hmm. a, patri- a patriarchal society and male chauvinism mm. is more in our country right so it is not like you have to you know uh, that means that if there is male ch- uh, chauvinism or patriarchy is there that you should promote feminism something no equality everyone right this should be uh, parting you should part things should be in a way like that uh, you and i both are equal for anything which is happening around everyone and laws are there to protect protect us but the laws which are made 
right they are they are made looking at the you know how people are socially boycotted what are the people uh, who are actually uh, you know facing difficulties right for the untouchables there were, there were a lot of things which you must have read how and how they were treated and still if you yes, see ma'am. there are few scs sts some obcs they are not given proper you know hand to hand with the things happening right yes, they ma'am. are not considered as to be people but but since our, it is the it is the our the uh, you know duty of the constitution to provide us yes ma'am. i completely agree with what you have just said ma'am so ma'am so with this we have come to an end to our discussion thank you so much ma'am for taking time out from your busy schedule and joining us today in this great session and giving us such great insights and knowledge about it and i ho- with this episode i hope this will help our listeners and i hope they got to know a lot of things about gender based violence and how we can cope with it and how to you know report if something you have seen like it So it was my immense pleasure talking to you today ma'am thank you so much same here michelle thank you with the end of this discussion i would like to say a quote a no coming from a drunk voice is still a no a no coming from someone who is naked is still no a no coming from someone you know is still a no a no coming from your partner is still a no and a no coming from a stranger is still a no and before you leave just remember your soul is fierce your heart is brave and your mind is strong <laughs>